gonna try to do this thing called the Foothills Trail. I'm gonna try and see if I can get to Hidden Falls. At the start of the trail, it looks like they've had a fire here. Don't know if it was a controlled burn, but there's lots of black trees and scorched trees here. But in the middle of it all, there's a little purple flower. A couple more markers. And I guess we'll just keep on going. Well, the trail here has changed a little bit. We've got lots of bushes and trees. Well, I'm back to more burnt out trees along the way. I've gone almost a mile. And more flowers pop it up. Well, I think I'm going the right way because down there at the bottom it says falls. Well, I just talked to that biker and he said I was going the wrong way. According to the guy in the bicycle, when I got to about this point, and I ended up going straight towards the Palmetto Trail, he said I probably should have gone to the left up here. I'm back where I started and never found Hidden Falls because they hid the sign and I couldn't find where I was going. So I just walked just about 2.5 miles for an hour and got nowhere. I have a t-shirt on right now, it says Happy Camper and I'm not happy with the Coney State Park. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm John. And we're the Geezers on the Go. In this episode, we're at Oconee State Park in the Blue Ridge Mountains of South Carolina. The park has 139 sites, most with water and electric. There are two lakes here, tons of trails, and some of the most lopsided campsites we've ever seen. No matter what you do in some of these sites, you're not ever going to get level. Maybe that's why we saw lots of tents and smaller rigs here. There were a few bigger rigs at the front of the park where they have their only full hookup sites. We didn't hate it, but it's definitely not for everyone. This is our campsite at Oconee State Park in Mountain Breast, South Carolina. It's in the northwest corner of South Carolina, almost right on the Georgia and Tennessee border. That's called Camp Ground Lake. This is pull through. We got a spot right on the lake here. Right now it's a Monday, oh, beginning of April, but there's hardly anybody here. So we'll see what it looks like later in the week when the sites are not quite real level, kind of gravelly in this this area anyway. But you're right on this little lake. Somewhere more than a hundred sites. Our sites just have water and electric. And the dump station's not too far, so we're good. Okay, we'll walk around to the other side of our campsite so you can see where we are right here down by the lake. Yeah. That's a good view. Pretty. The one downfall of this park for AT&T we have no cell service. It's kind of cool here by in this campground is these old-fashioned fences that border some of the sites here. You can see some over there too. But some of the sites are sort of old-fashioned seeing they're very gravelly and a lot of them not real level. But I guess this is old-timey camping. You've got lots of trees, and most of the service is just 30 amps, so if you have a big rig, this area is not good. There's another area up at the top that has some full hookups, but they're ugly sites, <laughs> in my opinion, because they're just, there's no trees, there's no anything. There's the bathroom up there, so it's not too far of a walk. And this one site over here, pretty cool. They got their, little, their car here, and then they got a tent. 
down there by the lake. Well, this looks like the uh, newer end. We've got a little bit of uh, chopped up uh, asphalt on the roads here. Yeah, these have sewer hookups as well as the water and electric, so these are more suitable for bigger rigs and as you can see there are some bigger rigs in here. But the sights are ugly. <laughs> yeah, they're not the prettiest sights in the world. It's the dump station. So now look here at our loop. It's this whole campground sort of a little strange. It's laid out, I guess it's old school, the way things used to be. This one's not bad, it's a big long one. And then you've got these pull-throughs, but most of them are kind of skinny, and most of them are terribly uneven. I mean, there's a couple ones, at least you're by the, at the lake, but like ours, it was very difficult to get level, and we're still not level. We're over here, over here by 14, 16, 18, and they're all pull-throughs, but they're so uneven. I don't think there's an even spot on this, <laughs> this campground. And this one, the power box has no cover on it. You're sort of by the little lake here. This one, 18, wouldn't be too bad, except it's all downhill. Take a little bit of maneuvering to get this all level. In the upper loop here, in the, oh, right across from where number 73 is, you have some tent sites, and it's anywhere from about a quarter of a mile or farther to where the tent sites are. So you have to, it's a big, big schlep out there. I guess eventually you make it back to where there's a picnic table and a fire ring and a little space to put your tent. Now this is secluded. I'm not sure how this is in the winter time, summer time. There have to be lots of bugs, but boy, you want seclusion, you got it. This is a kind of a quirky little campground. We've, we've uh, camped in a lot of South Carolina yeah. campgrounds and it isn't what you picture. It's not a, 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 an East Coast uh, beach resort type area. No, we're, we're in the mountains here. Yeah, in the mountains and it, it was built of, like the CCC in the 1940s and I don't think it's been updated much since then. The sites are a little bit uneven and there's a lots of trees so you have to be careful when you're pulling in your rig and it's probably not really big rig fit friendly although they have put some new sites out towards the front that have full hookups. Yeah because the, 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 the rest of the campsite right, is uh, like uh, uh, electric and water. water only. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's nice, but you also have to remember this place also does not have very good cell service. If you have AT&T, forget it. Verizon, you have some. The only saving grace, if you're like us, traveling a lot, there was free Wi-Fi up at the main office. Yeah, you we downloaded a lot of movies <laughs> yeah. uh, at the expense of the uh, state park system here. <laughs> okay, crazy Mets fans here. We get no signal at our campsite, so we're here sitting in the car watching the Mets game outside the office in South Carolina. Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! And then of course there's fishing, which requires no cell signal at all. Camp Ground Lake, as the name implies, was right below our campsite, so we started there. Here we are at a Camp Ground Lake here in Oconee Park. And we're going to try some fishing this morning. No motors are allowed, so John's going to try some rowing. <laughs> going to try some rowing. Okay. Well, let's hope we catch a fish. Well, it got windy, Jill. <laughs> yeah, a little windy, so we decided, well, let's go in for now. Who knows? Maybe later or tomorrow. But there's our trailer, so we didn't have too far to go because it got too windy. I don't like to row too far because I'm old. <laughs> I'm yeah. a geezer after all. Yeah. Uh -oh. I might be on the go, but I'm still a geezer. <laughs> Uh-oh, the wind picked up. We're going to be able to get back in. Okay, go that way. Go, to, go, the, go towards shore. <laughs> no, I'm going to back you in. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll see you later, folks. <laughs> we also tried fishing from the shore, but with no luck. 
At least it was a nice place to not catch fish. And there were some ducks to entertain us. As well as one of the most determined squirrels I've ever seen. And some pretty nice scenery too. There's a enough to do here there's this area is famous for its waterfalls there must be 30 different waterfalls in the area you could visit but i mean you might have to travel 10 15 20 we saw miles. them all too didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah we saw them all yeah, no, we saw some, about two or three uh, some of them are like five miles in and five miles out so yeah, so forget that we weren't walking that far we saw one that was only like a less than a mile to walk in so that was and there was good. that big old tunnel too oh big tunnel that was built for the railroad and that they never finished um, it was done in right around the Civil War. They got up about halfway through the mountain and quit. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and there's lots of trails. So basically, it's not a tunnel; <laughs> no, it's just a big hole in the ground. ground. There are a lot of trails too in the park. Uh, um, goes to all different places. I went to one that I thought I was going one place. Well, the signage was bad, so I just took a mile walk by myself. <laughs> yeah, you come to a fork in the road, and they say take it. Yeah, I took the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> but and the other thing with this uh, area too is that uh, you're kind of uh, well uh, not exactly in the middle of nowhere but uh, sort yeah. of off to the side of the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. It's you about know, uh, ten miles into town. Yeah, the main town uh, Walhalla is about mm -hmm. eight ten miles, and there's not a heck of a lot there, but uh, there's enough to do. Yeah, there's yeah. places to eat and there's drugstores and stuff. And it's Walhalla is called the Main Street to the Mountains. Yep. And that's where we are. Well, I'm on my way up to the Stump House Tunnel, about oh, five miles or so from the campground, so we'll see what we can see. It says it's only foot traffic. From what I was told, you could drive through it, but maybe not today. The Stump House Tunnel was sort of a defunct project that was started in the mid-1800s and it was supposed to provide airways from as they cut through the mountain. It was supposed to be something like 5,800 feet long and they only ended up getting about half of it done and then the Civil War came and they never finished it. Well, we'll see what it looks like. This is one of the rail cars, or I'm guessing it's original, it looks pretty old, that helped the miners go through the tunnel, which is up here a little bit. And we'll take a walk through there. As I get closer here, a cool breeze blows through. I think they said it stays at a 55 degrees, this tunnel. Ooh, it's chilly. Now that the camera's sort of adjusted to the light, you can see it. And there it goes! Woo! Woo! The tunnel was supposed to provide a railroad shortcut to Charleston, but all it was ever used for, apparently, was a Clemson University project to grow blue cheese. Well, we're making our way to what I think is pronounced Issaquina Falls. It's just down the road a teeny bit from the Stump House Tunnel. So be careful, lots of stumps here. The creek comes out of here, and we'll make our way to the falls. There's the name of it. It's the Queen of Falls, and it says it was named for a creek maiden. And she fell in love with a white trader. It's the Queen of Falls. Like you said, if you wanted to, you could walk down to the bottom. Let's not until you do. Trying to escape angry tribesmen, one legend says the princess and her lover plunged a hundred feet over the falls into their deaths. But the happy ending says they merely hopped to a hidden ledge and snuck away unharmed. Right at the trailhead here of the Issaquina Falls, there's a little place you could have a picnic by this little pond, a little gazebo. Just saw a froggy jump. Lots of cool places to stop and enjoy nature. 
Nature definitely was the high point of our trip to Oconee, and then it was time to move along. We're glad you could join us, and as always, we'll see you down the road. Stop, stop.